So today's the day, actually yesterday was the day that I started the garden. Um, it's not going as planned. Of course not. I Like I said in the other video, I have it in my mind how I want it to go, but it's not quite going like that. So I'm going to show you what I've gotten done so far and kind of explain. All right, this is what I got going so far. Okay. So my dilemma I'm running into is I'm putting dirt in, but it's it's falling it's falling down like in the parts that I don't want it to fall in. So I have a feeling I'm going to have to fill up every slat. Um but I gave some room between because this is, uh, where did my freaking, oh, it's spaghetti squash. These are spaghetti squash. So, and I know those get huge. They don't just, you know, stay in their one little area. They flourish out quite well. Um, that is yellow squash. Um... That is yellow squash. And those are the yellow squash that are from my seeds that I started. This is cantaloupe. I have never grown cantaloupe before. And I have four, five, six, eight, eight cantaloupe plants. And so far, I have butter crunch lettuce. And then those are sweet, I think banana, yeah, sweet banana peppers right there. I've got this soil, I got that, and then I got like seven or eight more bags in my vehicle. So what I think I'm going to have to do, honestly, is go through and fill up pretty much every slat of, with dirt because it's, it's not working. Like the dirt is just, you know, and every time I water it, every time it rains, I'm sure it's just going to, you know, run down into the open areas. Um, I wanted to try it like this, at least for one year, because uh, I wanted a bigger garden area than what I had. And if you remember, my last garden area was where my herb garden's going to be. So, and I thought I would try it this way because, you know, this is a rental house and I didn't want to mess up the yard um, by putting a big garden in. So this way I'm not really messing up the yard, digging it all up and whatnot. So hopefully, hopefully this works. I'm really hoping so. But I came out this morning because I had like 15 plants planted yesterday. I came out this morning and three of my plants were already dug up from something. So that was a little frustrating. Um, yeah. I'm going to use a couple of the, the pallets down the way and I am going to put my basil in with my tomatoes because like I said those are good at companion. There's a few other um, herbs that grow well together and that some that don't like you need to make sure when you're planting you don't want to put in an herb that likes well-drained soil with an herb that likes the soil to stay wet all the time so they're not going to get along very well they probably won't won't thrive very well but that's it so far that's what I've got so far so you can come along for a little bit, watch me how I do this, and learn either what to do or what not to do. <laughs> it's up to you. Okay. My grandson was here. I'm going to have to talk a little louder because my neighbor's mowing. Um, and he had his gloves out here helping me. And I've laid my other glove down so
don't even know where I like my other glove. So I'll wait, use one of these. Jake, go on. Yeah. So I'm gonna plant, or I'm gonna fill up some slats here first, and then uh, plant some plants. I'm going to move you guys closer. Cool. This is probably going to not seem like a good idea, but here we go. After doing that, this was a lot freaking easier to dump it like that and then just smooth it out like that. It was a lot easier than trying to get one little handful of time in between the slats. Um, I am going to have to find something to put on the ends to keep the dirt from flying out, going out on the ends. I think the pot, whoa, there we go. I think the parts that, hey! She's barked to the goats again. The parts that I'm not going to have plants in, like, cause I probably won't put plants like right next to the lettuce because you know, they'll get huge and then the lettuce is just gonna overshadow and overgrow on that. I'm not gonna fill them completely full of dirt, but just enough to help hold the dirt that's around them in. space with topsoil and not not good not good potting soil. So I went to get my tomatoes, or my basil, to plant around my tomatoes, and I didn't get basil. I thought for sure I grabbed basil, but I didn't. Sage, oregano, cilantro, thyme, rosemary, all that, but no basil. Okay, the garden is in, basically. Um, like I told you just a little bit ago in the video, uh, that I'm probably gonna have an issue with the, the dirt like falling out of its um, sections that I put it in. I probably will. 
Um, I'm, I'm pleased with it and I'm gonna show you, walk you over here in just a minute and show you. I'm pretty pleased with it. I just hope it works. I hope I don't lose everything. And I'm frustrated because I didn't have basil to plant with my tomatoes. I did leave space for basil when I go get it, but I was frustrated I didn't have it today to plant it. I did not get my herb garden done. Um, I feel like I've been doing this all day and didn't get everything done. But now I am sitting, relaxing for a little bit. Um, my German Shepherd's up in the window. And I don't know if you guys are drink, I am not a drinker. Like I know I'm, hol I'm holding a drink in my hand right now, but it's probably been, you are gonna knock the fan off of there. It's probably been a year since I've had any kind of an alcoholic drink, but I found these and the strawberry daiquiri ones. Amazing. So, not that I'm going to become an alcoholic or get start drinking these every weekend or whatever, but they're good. If you don't like the taste of alcohol, which I don't, ugh, these taste like Kool-Aid. Like literally Kool-Aid. And I know some people, this is off topic, this is not, <laughs> this is not um, learning to be self-sufficient, but this is a little tip for those who don't like drinking alcoholic drinks that taste like alcohol. Because I know like the Mike's Hard Lemonade or the Smirnoffs, people are like, oh, it tastes like Kool-Aid. No, it doesn't. It still tastes like alcohol. To me, these literally taste like Kool-Aid. To me. The, especially the strawberry daiquiri ones, even more so. I had one of those yesterday. Anyway, that was a side note. That was free. That had nothing to do with um, being self-sufficient. We're gonna walk over and I'm gonna show you what I accomplished today, which is not gonna look like much, but it feels like it was a lot. So let's walk over there and look at that. All right, here it is. I left spaces between because these things will get huge. So they need plenty of space to grow and to vine. So hopefully, when they start vining, I'm going to be able to train them, you know, work them in this direction to vine that way towards the woods and not towards the yard. Uh, this is more vining stuff. Again, why there's space in the middle. So I can hopefully train those things to vine this way. And Actually, you know what? These don't, I don't know why I said vine. They don't vine that much. They do some, not like green beans do, not like pole beans, but they do some. They get, they get more huge, like the leaves are huge and whatnot. It's my spaghetti squash and yellow squash. Here's some, that's my cantaloupe. This is all my tomatoes. And see, I was gonna put basil in between here and I was going to put more down here, but I didn't have any. And here is my beans. Now, the reason why that is that color is because that is a different brand of topsoil than the other stuff I had. So these are, yeah, I need to put this here. These are green beans. And over here, you can't see it, but I planted some peas. I have never planted peas before, so we are going to see how that goes. I still have two empty ones. Um, I didn't do anything with my radishes yet because I'm not quite sure what to do with them because... They grow underground, and I'm not going to plant them here and then have to move all the stuff out of the way to grow, to harvest them. So I haven't figured out what I'm going to do with that yet. I did give my neighbor 
some tomatoes because I had so many of them and then I still have extras. And then over here we have my loofah plants. There's one here, one here, one here, and then I planted some uh, pansies in that one because I only had three. And, ho and then I hopefully it'll vine up and over this thing because those do vine. I have never grown loofah plants before. I have a feeling that this is not going to be sufficient for three loofah plants to vine on, but we'll see. Um, here in a little bit, I'm going to turn the sprinkler on and then get that all watered. So for the rest of the day, I'm going to do one of two things. It's a, it's, I don't even know what time it is right now. It's probably like 4.30 in the afternoon, early evening. So I'm going to do one of two things for the rest of the day. I'm either going to start planting my herbs or I'm going to go exploring in my woods to see if I can find any more mushrooms. And I found this earlier. It's a onion, wild onion. Um, if I wait, because I'm off tomorrow too, I'll have another full day off. But if you all saw the inside of my house, like I literally have no clean forks or spoons. It's been that long since I've done dishes. Like my sink is full. So I need to do dishes. There's two loads of laundry in there that need folded. And there's one in the dryer. So really three loads of laundry need folded. Yeah. So I'm sitting here processing this all in my head. I think I might get all my planting done today and then work on the house tomorrow. I was really hoping I would have one day of not doing anything besides, you know, chilling out. But that's probably not going to happen. Those are so good. Um, I'm obviously going to keep you guys posted on how the garden's growing and how it's if it's if it's taken off and if that's working I just that was my only concern that the 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 dirt when I water it or if it rains if we get a really bad heavy rain it's just gonna out the sides like just go out the sides I'm sitting here thinking what I could do is get pieces of pallet board that's not being used like some of the slats of it and go put on the ends of the pallets to keep all the dirt in I might do that might do that and my neighbor over here who's on the other side of this wood line um, he's there it's an older couple he came over earlier and saw my little garden area and uh, saw all my bags of topsoil and fertilizer and whatnot he was like I have a huge mound of dirt over here it's been sitting there for years if you want some you're welcome to just come get whatever you need and I'm like that's great I wish I would have known that before I spent $60 on dirt because I already have my own fertilizer from the chicken coop and the goat pen anyway so I'll probably end up needing more because what I'll probably end up doing is filling in every single slat of dirt and then putting pieces of wood down on each end of the pallets, of the, each open end, to keep the dirt inside. If that makes sense. 
So let's um, walk with me out here. Let's just take a quick peek and see if we can find any mushrooms. Real quick. I'll take you with me. Chicken tips. Hi, chicken tip tips. It looks like it's got a storm. It's kind of cooled off a tiny bit. I'm hoping I got some sun today. I don't know if I did or not. Hi, Jack Jack. Hi, baby boy. Hi. Here's Jack. Hi, sweet boy. Opening into the woods here. So usually what I do, I kind of scan here real quick and then I kneel down, kind of get eye level with the ground and look. To see if I can see any mushrooms. And I've been in this area, I found at least three times right here in the opening of this area, mushrooms. So I don't know if there's going to be any more growing right here or not. And then I move a little bit. And kneel down again. I've also started researching a little bit on other mushrooms besides the morels. Um, so if I see some like growing on a tree or whatnot, um, I'll research it to see if it's edible too. Because I don't know a whole lot about anything else besides morels as far as edible mushrooms. I don't know if I've told you guys before. I think I did another video about I have a random patch of irises back in my woods. They're blooming. See? Pretty cool. Found this. Do you guys see this? This is henbit. It's very similar to purple nettle, but you can tell by the shape of the leaves. The leaves on henbit are all like in layers like this. You can see the little, or they, if I can hold my freaking phone still. You can see how they're, they, they're wide and they get smaller and then smaller. Um, and they're all at the top. If I find some purple nettle, I will um, show you the difference. But henbit is edible. I'm sure there's a whole bunch of purple or a whole bunch of edible things in, in the, here around me. I'm just not knowledgeable enough yet to know. Well, like I found out the bulbs to um, irises, you can freaking fix them like potatoes. I don't know if they taste like potatoes, but I heard you can, you can, har you can, you know, get them and then boil, clean them off and then boil them like potatoes and eat them with butter and salt on them. So, don't know how good they taste, don't know if they taste like potatoes, not real sure. There's more iris. Oh, I found honeysuckle. Oh my gosh. Can't I make honeysuckle jelly? I think I can. I am so excited right now. There is a ton of it. Let me show you. Okay, guys. Look at all this honeysuckle. Look at all this. And there's more over here.
And up in, up in the, I, there's, I'm not going to be able to reach up there, but there's plenty right there. Yay. And also, if you guys know what this is, do you guys know what these are? These little flowers. Trying to focus. I found some purple nettle. So let's take this purple nettle and we're going to go back up and find the hen bit. Okay, here's the hen bit. Okay, do you see the leaves? This is purple nettle. It's not very purpley on the top yet, but it will be. That's purple nettle. Let's pick this hen bit here. This is hen bit. From the top, they look very similar. But from the sides, you can tell. You see how far down these, si these leaves go? This does not, and it, this, there's one little bloom right there on it. But you can tell from the side definitely that this one's hen bit because all the leaves are up towards the top. And this is purple nettle. Very similar, both edible. So what I'm gonna do right now, I'm gonna wrap this video up and I'm going to look up stuff to do with honeysuckle and like when is a good time to pick it because I'm not 100% sure if I need to let it fully bloom or if I can get them now because they're not 100% you know fully bloomed right now jack 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 where's my jack jack where's my jack jack where's my baby Oh, I want Oh, Oh, Bless you. Okay. Okay. I put my lid over the top of it so no bugs would get in it when I was out there. Um. So I think it's been a productive day. I am going to, uh, like I said, research on how to when is a good time to harvest the um, honeysuckle and what I need to do with it because I'm I'm assuming you do the same thing as you did I did with the red bud and the wild violets you know let it steep in hot water for 24 hours and then you know make the syrup or the jelly so super excited about it anyway hope you guys had a great day hope it's sunshiny wherever you are because it's been sunshiny here for two days now makes me happy if this is your first video please subscribe down there push that subscribe button and after you push that subscribe button you will see a bell pop up that bell if you click that will give you um, notifications when I posted a new video. So, hope you all are having a blessed day and staying safe out there.